journalist who stumbled into a strange world when she started asking questions about alternative energy sources and heard the story of an early 20th century inventor named Nikola Tesla. Tesla is almost a cult hero and an overlooked genius. And he has so many inventions that are at the basis of technologies that we have today. She went to a conference on Tesla and had a close encounter with a mysterious scientific researcher who became her deep throat, her Mr. X. He sent me a file of materials about the uh, Bernard Eastland patent. About a month ago, the U.S. Patent Office granted a patent to a Houston-based scientist, Dr. Bernard Eastland, for an invention which, Dr. Eastland says, could be used to change the weather. Dr. Eastland says the invention could also be used to disrupt communications all over the world and might be used to destroy or deflect a missile attack. The Eastland patents had the ring of the mad scientist aspect of Tesla. Tesla talked about this Tesla shield around the planet and um, talked about particle beam weaponry something called a death ray. Death ray? Jean wasn't sure where all this was leading until Mr. X called again. And he said, the maniacs are actually going to do it up in Alaska. Mr. X's maniacs were in the U.S. Pentagon, and he was convinced they were conspiring to build Bernard Eastland's sky zapper under the guise of a nice little research project deep in the Alaskan bush called HARP. The uh, basic concept is to build a very large antenna, then to utilize a large amount of uh, power and uh, to beam those radio waves up into the upper atmosphere. Have you approached the Pentagon with this invention? Yes, and what I'm not at liberty to tell you is the details of what that interaction has been. The word spread through the Alaskan bush, and soon a band of suspicious Alaskans set out to warn people about what they saw as the U.S. military's secret agenda. And what you have with HARP is sort of the universal hammer for geophysical warfare. Nick Begich is the chief conspiracy theorist. So when did you know that, that you were onto something? I think as soon as I saw the references to um, Tesla's work, and when I read Bernard Eastland's original patents, I realized that what we really had uh, here in Alaska was a prototype for a ground-based Star Wars weapon system. HARP is a non-classified project run not by Bernard Eastland, but by the U.S. Army and Navy. The official HARP story is told by one man, John Heckscher. Uh, it consists of several types of transmitting instruments and numerous scientific um, uh, instruments that study the, uh, the natural uh, ionosphere and uh, the ionosphere that has been uh, perturbed by the instruments that we are building. The ionosphere is a sea of electrically charged particles in the upper atmosphere, and the instrument is a powerful radio wave transmitter. Does it have any military applications? Um, the site itself is strictly a, a scientific research site. Um, perhaps the outcome of some of the science, perhaps some of the results, could be applied in a military to military systems. Just a little physics project? Jim Roderick isn't buying it. He's been gunning for the real goods on HARP, and his weapon is the Internet. The military is incapable of doing pure science. Science is conducted by them for application in weapon systems for no other reason. From his shack in the middle of an Alaskan village, Jim and his co-conspirators around the globe have been tapping into databases. They've dredged up hundreds of long-buried scientific reports and even some internal documents from the military. They call it the world's first techno-protest. And they did it all on the military's own baby, the net. Plans uh, for HARP activities uh, correlate with projections of what can be done in the Eastland patents. It's, it's, it's that simple. So it's not a coincidence? It's not a coincidence. Well, 
Um, I hate to disagree with you, but uh, uh, it's not his patent that we're building. Superficially, yes, um, they send energy up into the ionosphere, but um, the, uh, the Eastland patents require huge, prodigious, in fact, amounts of power, like 100 billion watts. Remember that number, 100 billion watts. You'll hear it again later. Um, HARP requires only uh, 3 million watts. There is a paper trail leading no. us back to Eastland. No, there is not. There is no uh, paper trail that I'm aware of that's leading back to Eastland. Eastland used to be an employee of the company, which is building HARP, but that's pure coincidence. Is it also a coincidence that the tiny company that owned Eastland's patents was later swallowed up by an enormous military intelligence firm called E-Systems? 2.1 billion in annual sales, 1.8 billion of that, with a B, was to a military intelligence groups, CIA, NSA, um, and others, and of, of that, 800 million were, were black projects, so, so secret that even the United States Congress didn't know what they were. E-Systems was then swallowed up by Raytheon Corporation. It, too, specializes in super-secret contracts with the Pentagon. Why would Raytheon be so excited about this? Well, it's a ground-based Star Wars weapon prototype. For them, it represents potentially billions and billions of dollars. So how would you describe this world of E-Systems and Raytheon and HARP. Dark. There's a lot of people around here that have a really lot of strange ideas, and I think many of them are pretty bizarre. Michelle Angbritson you know, keeps I mean, the HARP computers from freezing up in between visits from the military scientists. Well, do you know, I mean, do you understand what they're, what they're doing here well, when the scientists the, come in? You mean when the scientists come in and shoot the beams up? Yeah, they're uh, shooting the beams up and I think that heats a little small space in the ionosphere. And then uh, you've got guys that are sitting on computers and you've got uh, people putting up weather poles that measure weather and everything like that. I mean, there's not that spooky going on here. There have been claims made by some scientists that, um, that you could heat up the ionosphere and affect local weather. Uh, if you were to do Eastland patents, I have no doubt that's the case. Claims are being made that it could disrupt global communications. Global? That it, yes, no. that, it, that it could shut down another country's communication system and enhance your not, own. Not hard. Not, not HARP in As it is Alaska, now. no. But you couldn't disable any systems? Those that use, if, if the systems used a path which was accessible to the HARP beam, yes. Starting to sound like Eastland's invention to you? Well, remember, John Heckscher says HARP has nowhere near the power levels Eastland talked about. It seems like this entire thing has been a matter of uh, disinformation. Eric Nashlin understands the military. He spent 15 years in the service as a radio engineer. He knows deception. It came to our attention that there was a document, a, a te technical memorandum, I, I think it was 195 or something like that. And reading right in the front of it, they said that, bottom line, Although this is here, it does not constitute publication. It doesn't exist. It basically doesn't exist. So it was kind of like, wow, here's, here's the document that doesn't exist. We're talking several hundred pages of document that, you know, doesn't exist on a project that is completely unclassified and open to the public. We got it through friendly folks in the right spots. But it really lays out, these are notes from a conference that really break down where they were going to use this technology and how this technology was going to be applied. Remember the 100 billion watts debate? Well, for Nick Begich, this document was pay dirt. And in the document that we uncovered, the actual desired level of these researchers um, is 100 billion watts. And there we're talking something closer to the order of what um, Bernard Eastland envisioned. You must be familiar with technical memorandum 195, which talks about a desired level of 100 billion watts. Which memorandum? Technical memorandum 195. Uh, I'm not familiar with that number. Well, it's about 600 pages. And it's, it's, I mean, you may not acknowledge it because it's not, it hasn't been published. 
But it exists. I've seen it. I don't know what Technical Memorandum 195 is, because I haven't seen it. This is a published document. It's non-released. And it's the word games that John Hexer plays and the word games the United States military plays. And it's the word games they continue to play. And those are the things that need to end. Zap incoming missiles, disrupt global communications, and engineer the weather. And ready? There's one more. Some people believe the technology being tested here could be used for sinister projects involving humans. Radio waves messing around with people's brain waves. And guess what? The military denies this one, too. The uh, human mind is subject to uh, being affected by uh, radio frequency energy, and that's what this device is. In other words, you can move the moods of large populations using this kind of technology. So now we have not just maniacs in the Pentagon, but a bunch of Dr. Strangeloves? Pretty weird stuff. But scientists have been experimenting with radio frequencies on animals' brains for decades. And the military has followed it all very closely, especially once it found out the Russians were onto it. It was all kept a deep, dark secret by the two superpowers. Back in the 60s, the Soviets began zapping the American embassy in Moscow with a low-frequency beam. No one knows for sure what they were up to, but one theory is that they were trying to mess with people's central nervous systems. And one report did say the diplomats got depressed a lot. And hey, just think of all the nifty applications against the enemy. Why blow people up when you can drive them crazy? From uh, documents dating back into the early 80s, we see that the military had discussed uh, the possibilities of mind control through uh, radio frequency energy. Uh, the possibility is there. The military has studied it. A 1982 Air Force report called radio frequency energy a major new research initiative and said that RF can, quote, disrupt normal purposeful behavior. A 1987 military report called for more research on RF energy as a non-lethal weapon while pointing out that most of the existing technology is classified. And sure enough, in 1993, there was a big conference at John Hopkins University. Here, the entire conference was classified. But the agenda wasn't, and weapons using extremely low radio frequencies, or ELFs, were listed as a very attractive option. Is it just a coincidence that there's been all of this talk and that HARP will be experimenting with, with this? Is that all just coincidence? I believe the... Uh... The ability of ELF to affect the mind is, is a, uh, a side issue for us. It may be real, I can't say. It's been exceedingly difficult to find information on what is supposed to be a major new initiative of the military. All we see is HARP. Well, <laughs> then I'm being kept in the dark, if that's the case. The question is, you know, could they, would they? And we believe they can and we believe they will. Somewhere, at some point, all of this technology merges at some level within the Pentagon, and it happens to be in Alaska, and it happens to be now. It isn't just conspiracy theorists who are concerned about HARP. In January of 1999, the European Union called the project of global concern and passed a resolution calling for more information on its health and environmental risks. Despite those concerns, officials at HARP insist the project is nothing more sinister than a radio science research facility.